Foot Clan, it is finally here. The 2022 season kicks off. We've got starts of the week and matchups and news and never not working. It is a jam-packed episode with a lot of excitement. And, of course, Jason breaks out his boom, boom, kicker poetry, which is elite. Do not miss a minute. Make sure you like, subscribe, leave a comment. Enjoy. Hey, this is Alan Robinson, and you're listening to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh, welcome in. Hey, everybody. It's, it's football time. time. Hey. Hey. Woo. Oh, the wait is over, Mike. Jason, we got football. <laughs> yes. There's a reason to live. Thursday, <laughs> September 8th. It's kickoff time. Mm. We have football tonight. Welcome into the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Andy, Mike, and Jason joined by the Deucers, Kyle the Borgogan, Judge Giamatti, <laughs> Al Borland. Good work, everybody. Yeah, well done. Well done. It and, is. And to you at home. I know you joined in. Excellent work. We have never not working on the show today. We've got some news to talk about a lot, actually. Uh, if you joined us on Spotify Live yesterday afternoon, some of that had come through, but just injury rumblings and uh, fears and all of that. We'll talk through some start set decisions based on those injury reports. The fantasy forecast. Probably get through about seven, eight matchups on today's show. Starts of the week and the boom, boom kicker. Oh, yeah. And, um, oh, yeah, there's football. Oh, baby! Oh, <laughs> the lights. Oh, man, studio upgrade on the YouTube. <laughs> Party time for one and all. Looking good. Having a big party. Well, I look so many players. I think I got, you know, in our major leagues, you know, Josh Allen, Matthew Stafford, Dawson Knox, Allen Robinson, Stephon Diggs, Gabe Davis. Yeah. I mean, they're Cam yep. Akers and Daryl Henderson. There's so many players. Oh, don't start them. There's so <laughs> many players that are going to be a blast to watch tonight. Devin Singletary, does he does he have it? Uh, that's, a, that's a great question. Is James Cook used in the passing game? Yeah. Yeah. But he was not used. <laughs> Twitter at the FF Ballers. Follow us over there. Help us get to 300,000 subs on YouTube because we are at 299,000. The lights alone should have, should have put that over the top. Is that how it works? If you upgrade yep. the studio, you just get more subs? Yeah. I mean, if you build it, they will come, right? YouTube.com slash the fantasy footballer. Subscribe. Click the bell. Mike is going live Sunday morning, every Sunday morning. It's going to be a spectacular year. Mike will help you out right before all the games kick off with start sit questions. You will watch a man cry. You yes. will watch him laugh. I like to think of it as you watch him comb his beard. You're helping me, right? Like I'm. I'm it's like a coping thing. Yeah. Well, I mean, we're all in it together. It's it's circular. Of I help you, you help me. We try and stay right side up, <laughs> which is I mean, in fantasy football, one of the hardest things to do. As we begin today's show, we are bringing back one of the most popular segments of last year. Never Not Working. Presented by Head & Shoulders, Scalp Shield Technology. Available at Walmart. Last year, 18 weeks of Never Not Working, 18 different unique tips and tricks and insights to help you unlock fantasy success. Mike... You are yes. looking at this week's Never Not Working. Yeah, head and shoulders, never not working. We are always working here over at the Fantasy Footballers, and we're looking at some week one thresholds to consider because week one, it's a time for celebration. It is a time of much rejoicing. It is also a time. Oh, I'm undefeated, by the way. Absolutely, we all are. And it is also a time of much tilting as you watch and it's like, this player that you loved, maybe they didn't produce, but here is a threshold that you should be considering. As in, like, 
Perhaps, Reveal yourself. Yeah, per perhaps the efficiency wasn't there, but was the utilization there? So is this to protect against like panic in week one? Absolutely. So week one, which uh, it could also induce. Yeah, panic. I was going to say. <laughs> I think there's a couple of players here that this could really cause extra panic. On. But it could. And so at the running back position, Jason brought this up on the the ten tips and tricks episode. Running backs who see fewer than thirteen carries in week one. They tend to not return big production on the season. Gulp. Since 2011, guys who saw fewer than that mark, the 13 carries, they averaged under 500 rushing yards and about three rushing touchdowns on the season. I mean, that it's, it's eye-opening. It, it seems like it's, it's, it's one of those is like, well, this is common sense, but it's good to see some actual hard data about it at the wider. And, like, guys we're looking at, you know, Damian Pierce, everyone's favorite offseason season fantasy football player does he hit that threshold he like should he, cross that. he oh why well, he absolutely should but i mean if he doesn't like 29 carries right i mean it, over under of over that? under definitely yeah. over at the way and it's just like Brees hall is he hit that mark i know that jason's going to be clenched for the entirety of the jets game i am already pre-clenched <laughs> i'm hoping to unclench at some point he's been clenched for weeks yeah <laughs> at the wide receiver position over the last five years only 10% of the wide receivers finishing in the top 24 had fewer than five targets in week So pay one. attention to five targets at the wideout position. So, you know, you're looking – like the, the rookies, we know that they – sometimes it takes them a little bit to get going, but it's like Amon Ross St. Brown. Do we get those five targets immediately and we just we can feel a little bit more what secure? About, what about Rondale Moore in Arizona? Sure. Where he's going to play and then you're like, is he going to be integral? Hopefully it's five or more targets. Sure, and like some lower tier guys, you know, Brandon Ayuk, mm -hmm. he had apparently a a really strong off season over in San Francisco. The uh, he the, just got cut. The John Lynch just cut. It's him. very possible. The Kansas City Chiefs wide receivers, Juju MVS, the Lizard King. Maybe, maybe we see him go off week one. I mean, probably if Alan Lazard is out. He and, has to break all these metrics, right? Because yes. week one he gets his well, five targets of the year. It does. It it doesn't mean for sure you're going to finish there. It's just saying that guys that finish under these thresholds, the the probability it it's already up against it. For the tight ends, over the last five years, eighty five percent of the tight ends that finished in the top eight they ran at least twenty three routes in week one. Guys that we will be paying close attention to. Evan Engram, Big Irv Smith, who is back for the Minnesota Vikings. Gerald Everett, David Njoku, and of course, what's going on with Albert Oguebanon for the Denver Broncos. I mean, that that was quite the uh, quite the ride this offseason of, okay, yeah, we're in. No, no, now we're out. The three wide receivers are going to take over. Tim Patrick goes down for the year. Maybe Alberto. Oh, but then, it's Greg Dulcich time now. And, and then all of the uh, the preseason usage, he's playing in the fourth quarter with like second and third stringers. And oh, then Dulcich is out. <laughs> so those are, those are just some thresholds to keep in mind uh, as you're watching week one. All right, get up to 100% dandruff protection. That is never not working with Head & Shoulders Scalp Shield technology available at walmart.com. Use it every time you shampoo. You can see the difference. News and notes from around the league. Presented by USAA Insurance. It wouldn't be a new football season without groinindex.com updating their list of, ah! gro of groin injuries. My groin! But guys... These are upsetting. Yes. 49ers tight end George Kittle didn't practice on Wednesday due to a groin injury. Suffered in Monday's practice. They're calling him day-to-day, -day, but here we are again Come with on, George man. Kittle. Man, it's it's tough in the streets. I mean, this has always been Kittle's problem is staying on the field. When he's on the field, he's excellent. Um, this is one that's upsetting, though, because... You don't have a backup option. You're not going to drop him, but you need to be prepared. No. You need yes, to. You do. And uh, we'll talk about some tight ends on the starts of the week that I think you can actually find on some of your waiver wires if you need to pivot from George Kittle. But he is only day to day. If he plays, you're playing him. And another groin injury to uh, a player that is near and dear to your heart, Jason. Chase Edmonds, running back for the Dolphins, limited with a groin injury. Yeah, this one stinks. Um, he. Seemingly, from uh, from everything that you had heard, had wrapped up the uh, primary running back position. Hopefully, he is just held out and gets back to practice today. We will find out more soon. It is a situation where 
today, you can be paying it. I mean, Raheem Mostert is on waiver wires. Yeah. Not all of them, but a lot of them. And so if you need a week one start, maybe you drafted J.K. Dobbins and you thought he was going to play. Let me ask you this. If you draft the Cam Akers, you're playing him tonight against that Buffalo defense over a flyer on Raheem Mostert. Yeah, I'm not waiting to find out the news on Chase Edmonds. I, I'll start the guy that I drafted to play tonight, uh, but I did not draft Cam Akers anywhere. So. Deontay Johnson, limited Wednesday with a shoulder issue. He said he is trying everything he can do that his arm allows him to do to get out there on Sunday, one day at a time. We'll see where it goes. It was an AC joint injury. That's, I mean, that's just not how you want <laughs> – players talking i'm yeah. trying to get this darn arm to work whatever it'll let me do um you kind of need your shoulder and your arm to catch the football a lot uh you know they're he, on the road against cincinnati with a new quarterback where the device you know like dalvin right. cook did uh as a receiver so it's it's definitely worrisome do you he could get knocked out of the game that's another risk with it an is. ac joint injury yeah all you do like you're a football player it doesn't matter whether you want to protect your shoulder or not. You go up for a ball. You come down on the shoulder. He's not playing the rest of that game if that happens. So the question is, let's say he's questionable all week and then he gets the start. He is going to be active. Do you look for a pivot option um, later in the week and just protect yourself? Or do you say, I'm, I'm playing the guy I drafted? Because for, for I instance... Think, I if, think most likely you're playing Deontay Johnson, but... I know, like, tonight, to give you the same question you gave me about Chase Edmonds, if I had Gabriel Davis tonight, I would be playing him oh, no over doubt. waiting on uh, Deontay Johnson. I think there's a chance you could have, like, you know, Rashad Bateman. I'll give you two names. Elijah Moore, Darnell Mooney. Like, there's a chance that you have those guys. Olave, well. Traylon Burks, would you start either of those over? Oh, my gosh. The rookies? I, I want to see Probably Traylon's not. involvement. I would, I would be more confident starting Olave week one than Traylon. Chris Godwin. Not at practice today. Wait, what? That's what I'm seeing. Come on. Kyle, is this true? He's Full not... participant on Wednesday, but not practicing today? Correct. It's weird. Well, I think this is... Super. I think this is actually to be expected to some degree. He's been participating in camp. He's had the non-contact jersey on. The expectation is that he was not going to start the season. And if they're getting now into, look, we are preparing for this game, I don't think Godwin plays this game. That was my expectation. I, I just drafted him in uh, one of our leagues, and, and I drafted him expecting him to not play this week. You think they have an extra contact jersey out there that they give to some guys that they really want to <laughs> knock around? Uh, that's your punishment? Like You, you, gotta wear the, you mouthed off yesterday. You get the extra contact? And the uh, the, the Bucks are the Sunday night game, so Ooh. I would... Uh, you, I could, mean, you're not you, could you could Russell Gage it. You could. Yeah, he's back, or Julio. he's missed a lot of time. Julio is, like, for instance, uh, I, I have Julio. I drafted Julio in the same place I got Godwin for this purpose. I've got Julio in my lineup. I'm not starting Godwin... Like yeah, if Godwin yeah. is active this week, which I don't think he will be, I'm not starting him. Michael Thomas returned to a limited practice. He he equivocated on whether he'd be allowed to play on Sunday. Basically said, we'll find out. That's the goal. Um, I'd love to wait and see on Michael Thomas. It's, if a, good, I, if, it's a good goal. Yeah. Miles Sanders returned to a full practice on track to play in week one. We'll, we'll see what that running back room yeah. ends up uh, like snap count wise. Christian Watson returned to a full practice. Alan Lazard did not practice. I I had seen somewhere that uh, it was being called an ankle injury for Alan Lazard. the The only official report we got was that he was stepped on last week in practice. Ankle makes sense, but we don't have you know. Does he have a a toe problem? A, a mid foot? We we don't know what exactly is going on. And then we found out this morning that Matthew Stafford did have an off season elbow procedure. Um, that's why he described himself as a hundred percent entering tonight. He had a PRP injection and a non-surgical procedure aimed at healing the elbow. So this was not a surgical procedure. The The nice thing about this is, uh, you know, the worry of if this was just from playing football and the only solution was rest, which is what they were kind of making it seem like this offseason, you're not going to get rest through the season. If there was this um, non-invasive procedure done and they are resting to give recovery from that procedure, I, I, that actually that doesn't scare me. That makes the off-season rest make more sense to me. All right. Uh, anything else breaking right now, gentlemen? I appreciate the – all three of our producers are donning the jerseys today. Was we this have, planned? Was this discussed? Oh, yeah. 
Yeah. Well, okay. why don't why it's don't football you, time, baby? Everybody, okay. go to YouTube and take a look at the new producer cam, which cannot be turned on until we are af- over three hundred thousand subscribers. <laughs> oh so, my gosh, man! You guys want it? <laughs> you just gotta oh subscribe harder. Okay, smash subscribe that button. harder. <laughs> Click the button as hard as you can. Uh, Kyle Pitts jersey for Kyle. Is that right? That's right. I love it. And then. Um, what you got, like a Marion Barber on there? Deion got, Sanders? Uh, old school uh, Darren Woodson. Oh, okay. All right. Hall of Fame safety for the Cowboys. Yeah. Yeah, we got the Cowboy fan in here. And then um, Risen from the Dead, Al's got the Randall Cobb jersey on, which I know you bought the first go-round for Randall Cobb, right? Oh, you know it. Kind of like him in DFS this week. It's not bad. It's priced just right. All right, that was today's news and notes brought to you by USAA Insurance. Learn more at usaa.com slash insurance. It's time for the fantasy forecast, followed by the starts of the week. Fantasy forecast. We have to be careful on today's show. Of course. (laughs) Because the temptation to talk about every single player and all of the unknowns, um, we could probably spend the whole episode on every matchup. The well, New let's, or- let's start with Adam Troutman. Yes. <laughs> yes. Uh, New Orleans, the Saints take on the Atlanta Falcons in Atlanta. Just give me 23 routes. <laughs> the DraftKings Sportsbook line here, New Orleans, uh, five and a half point road favorites. The over-under is just 42 points. Um, these teams have a tendency to surprise us sometimes, uh, even when the lines are more extreme in terms of the divisional matchup. Jameis Winston. Uh, in week one last year, you remember it? Yeah. Five touchdowns on, like, on what, like six passes? Yep. <laughs> Marcus Mariota at quarterback making the debut for Atlanta. Mariota will be probably more exciting as the season goes on that like if you have to stream a particularly juicy matchup, but for now, do not play him. And then uh, let's look at the uh, the running back room here. Alvin Kamara. Yes. You got that drop? Do we have the Alvin Kamara drop? Oh, it's super. Oh, we've got it. I mean, we might. Might not. Uh, Cordero Patterson and Alvin Kamara. Uh, yeah, <laughs> right sure. on time. It's really on on Al. Uh, Alvin Kamara, Cordero <laughs> Patterson. Kamara's in your lineup. Uh, there has been some talk about Damian Williams uh, over the last week. I know Tyler Algier is enticing for fantasy players, especially – just on the promise that maybe somebody can take over the backfield. I think that's why that's been brought up. Mm-hmm. But as we begin the season, Cordero's going to have a ton of work out of the backfield, and Damian Williams seems to be the next man up. Agreed. It's funny. Cordero got off to a, such a hot start last year. His situation is very, very similar, and I don't want to start him. Like When I've looked at my start-sit decisions and where he factors in, I have a really hard time putting him into the lineup, which maybe that just coincides with not having uh, having had kind of a hard time drafting him. But Probably coincides with the number one ranked run defense as yeah. well in New Orleans. Yeah, so are you – is there any situation where you're starting Cordero Patterson? Are you starting someone like Ramondre Stevenson over Cordero Patterson? I am willing to, and I'll, I'll bring another name up, Melvin Gordon. Sure. Uh, where the matchup is really juicy, I would be willing to roll with the favorite in that situation. Gordon, perhaps, if you're, like, you're trying to pick up the – the scraps at the end of the game, but I would more than likely go Patterson. It is still in question whether Drake London's going to be out there, Kyle, the resident Atlanta expert. Correct. So um, if he's out there, first round rookie wide receivers in week one since 2016, they averaged three for 53 and only three of them have gone over 75 yards. So that fits with the might take a minute for rookies to get going. Jason said he wants to see Traylon Burks out there. Even Chris Olave Could be a risk if Michael Thomas is back out there. And, um, you know, three for 53 is not going to make you happy. Yeah, three for 53 seems like what you could get here because I think the expectation is that the Saints handle this game. I mean, obviously it's division. uh, It's a divisional game, so it it could be a little bit closer. But this projects to be more of an Alvin Kamara. They're leading. uh, Even Mark Ingram uh, could get some play here. That's one of the problems with Patterson. When they lost last year, he only had 10.6 touches per game, uh, and they're projected to lose. In losses? Yeah. I mean, that's that seems like backwards of what you would expect. As but his touches catcher. over the back half of the year were on the ground, not through the air, and that right. was the biggest problem. 
it also cost me a championship. <laughs> Chris Olave, we just said it. Yep. Let's uh, hopefully you can wait and see. You could always throw the dart here, though. The matchup is nice. The Falcons' defense, twenty uh, seventh against opposing wide receivers, giving up thirty points a game. And if Michael Thomas plays, I actually feel better about Olave in that situation because I think Thomas will end up with the matchup against AJ Terrell. That would be the expectation for me, and Olave might have more opportunities. Yeah, I think that really the only three players I'm really happy to start on in on from both sides uh, of this game are Kyle Pitts, Alvin Kamara, and, and Jameis Winston. Because even though you don't know if it's going to be Michael Thomas or Chris Olave or Jarvis Landry, he will get or, – or Alvin Kamara, I think Winston has a, has a pretty solid game. All right, the San Francisco 49ers taking on the Chicago Bears. The DraftKings yeah. Sportsbook line, San Francisco minus 6.5 on the road. The over-under is just 40 points, which, uh, well, those are all on the San Francisco side. They are projected for almost 24 points. The Bears, 17. This is a fun one, though, because we get Trey Lance and we get Justin Fields, two potentially uh, high-ceiling fantasy quarterbacks. Let's see how they, uh, they start off the season. I mean, I expect Trey Lance to have a a very solid game for Fields though. Like this is a really strong test of looked solid in the in the in the preseason there uh, in that one particular game week two or I believe it was, but against the San Francisco 49ers, at least he's at home. But against the 49ers to start your year with with this defense, it's going to be very tough for him. There is a big gap in offensive line versus defensive line when you're looking at the Bears <laughs> right. offense the Bears offensive line is one of their biggest weaknesses and the San Francisco 49ers defensive line is one of their biggest strengths so even though David Montgomery is a player that you're probably starting where you drafted him I think you're looking more for what is the utilization than what is the production in this game yeah, they are uh, heavy underdogs at home it will be a test for Trey Lance I mean sure. first start as the kind of uh, you've been handed the keys to this mm -hmm. team officially and you're on the road in Soldier Field. So I think that there will be some um, challenges there, but it will also mean that if he overcomes those on the road in week one, it should be a very good sign of things to come fantasy-wise for Trey Lance if that happens. Um, his rushing prop on DraftKings right now is 38 and a half rushing yards. Yeah, we posted a question on uh, Twitter, on our main Twitter account last night. Who did you draft the most? Who are you most excited about? And who are you most scared about? I believe I saw Al's answer was Trey Lance, Trey Lance, <laughs> Trey Lance. Uh, this is this is going to be a fun game to uh, kick kick off the season with. And I think, look, just because it's his first game, uh, you know, this he started season, a couple last year. Um, you, you go okay, well, it's going to be a challenge. But if you got to have a challenge, give me the Bears. Right. Uh, the okay, so put it to the test: Lance versus Stafford tonight. Against the Bills. Lance. Lance. Dak or Lance. Dak's oh, against Tampa. Gosh. Lance. Lance. Oh, Tampa. I'm worried. We'll get to that game probably tomorrow. But, I mean, Dallas is, off again, offensive line versus defensive line. Strength versus weakness. That scares me. I'll take uh, Lance. Cousins against Green Bay or Lance? Lance. Lance. All right. Uh, wait and see on Justin Fields. You, you talked yep. about David Montgomery. Elijah Mitchell will get the start for the 49ers. But... I expect to see some other backs out there, and that will be interesting in terms of who they trust. Jeff Wilson is next up on the depth chart, then Tyrion Davis-Price, then Jordan Mason. So we will see who gets opportunity and who looks good because I think Kyle Shannon is actively looking for the compliment and the next man up and what's going to happen here. I think that Jeff Wilson, if, as you're heading into the weekend, if should, like let's say one of these players, these injured players that we talked about, they go out and you're looking for someone to stash and the waiver wire has already kind of been combed through. Jeff Wilson could be the pass catching running back for San Francisco, and he could be the goal line running back. So I think that he is worthy of just put on the back of the bench and see what happens. The pass catchers in Chicago, Darnell Mooney had a 28% target share uh, last year. Or wait, what was his target share last year? It was about 25. 25. Yeah, it could go up this year with the options that they have. And then Cole Komet. I'm very excited about Cole yep. Komet's debut. Um, you know, the 49ers were good against tight ends, but he should be peppered with targets and given opportunities. And if it's a negative game script, both Mooney and Komet should have opportunities to really in the second half of the game, um, kind of even, worst case scenario, garbage time, some value. It's wild that you have this 
this team, the Chicago Bears, with the offense in a bad position, and yet you like there's some excitement for three of these players, like the Montgomery, Mooney, and Komet. All should have enough volume for their position. Yeah, consolidate the yep. options, yes. and they are great for fantasy. The the I think a, a good question to ask in this game is Elijah Mitchell. Are you concerned with the fact that he's been injured, and are you worried about that? So the when I look at my rankings and the one that I'm trying to decide, man, who would I start if I had these two guys are in this game? Elijah Mitchell or David Montgomery? Who Ooh, would you start? I would start David Montgomery. I chose the Elijah Mitchell side. Montgomery will have a, a ton of uh, pass catching opportunities, and Mitchell won't. And and so yeah. I, I guess I feel a little more confident in total opportunities, but maybe less efficient, like you said. Yeah, I, I was going with you know the favored team and the uh, bad situation Montgomery finds himself in. But you're right, the pass catching will be on David Montgomery. So who do you pick, Mike? I Elijah Mitchell is higher in my rankings for me he, from uh, you know. Week 10 through the playoffs, averaged 26 opportunities per game. Like Elijah Mitchell, utilization was almost Najee Harris levels. The pass catchers on San Francisco, Debo Samuel's in yes. your lineup. Yep. Kittle, if he's healthy, is in your lineup. Yep. The question I have is, do you have any comfort in potentially starting Brandon Ayuk in week one? You probably don't have to. If Kittle is out, Because of your I'm draft fine. situation, but it's if Kittle is out. Yep, yep, 100%. All right, uh, let's take a quick break, and then we'll be back with uh, a pretty exciting game in Cincinnati. The Pittsburgh Steelers head to Cincinnati to take on the Cincinnati Bengals, who are fresh off a Super Bowl appearance. The over-under in this one's 44, but the Cincinnati That's a Bengals. That's nice way to say it. The Super Bowl appearance? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, you, uh, there's only two things you can say. You I'm appeared, you appeared there, or you won. Let's <laughs> just say you could say you're a Super Bowl loser. Yeah, no, I, I, that, that would disrespect the season. Right? No, I would totally. never do that. I would never call I mean, like them to Super get Bowl. like so close to. I your would never do that goal. unless it was the Patriots that are lost okay. or something like that. Um, but I mean, look, Cincinnati six and a half point home favorites in this game. They're projected to hit the uh, twenty five and a half point mark. Pittsburgh's down at eighteen. Uh, this this game, I am of the uh, belief. I am of the belief that the Cincinnati Bengals are going to mop the floor with the Pittsburgh Steelers in Week One. Okay. Um, this is just based on, I think, personnel wise, they match up very well. They're at home. Joe Burrow and the weapons that he has in the secondary. Pittsburgh can't keep up with what Cincinnati will inevitably do on offense. That is my opinion of this game. I think you you just can't get to the you can't match them blow for blow and I don't think the Pittsburgh defense is going to be able to go on the road in week one and slow down Jamar Chase T Higgins Joe Mixon and company that is just the angle I am taking so I think Joe Burrow is a very strong start um in this game and I I have question marks all over the offensive side for Pittsburgh yeah, I mean a six and a half point favorite is is a pretty heavy favorite for an in-division game obviously they are the better team here, so I completely understand what you're saying. That being said, over the last three years, these Pittsburgh-Cincinnati games have really hit the under five of the last six, averaging a total of 38.5 points per game. This has an over-under right now of 44 points uh, on the DraftKings Sportsbook, so I'm not. this isn't what I'm excited about. I'm, I'm, of course, I mean, if you've got someone like Chase, Higgins, Mixon, even Burrow, um, you're starting those players. You drafted them, and this isn't the scariest matchup. But I don't look at this as a great opportunity for a high-scoring, back-and-forth affair, a barn burner. This really could end up being a great Joe Mixon game yes. because if they come out and if Joe Mixon happens to score the first touchdown of the game and they get up and the Steelers' offense with Trubisky can't move against a great Bengals defense – I think you that worries me a little bit for the passing game for the Bengals. Last year, in the first matchup on the road at Pittsburgh, Joe Mixon had uh, 19 opportunities, 18 carries for 90 yards. And then the second game, uh, Joe Mixon was dominant. We're talking 28 attempts, 165 rushing yards, two rushing touchdowns. And in both of those games, Joe Burrow failed to surpass 200 passing yards despite putting up the, – the Bengals put up 41 points on the Steelers, and Joe Burrow was barely a QB1. Uh, the running back 
was the one position that the Steelers gave it up a lot last year, 23 and a half points a game, 26 in the league, stronger against all the other positions. I do think that the sneaky start of Pat Fryermuth, sure. Uh, if Deontay Johnson misses this game or is limited in the Bengals, that's the one area they gave up 12 points a game to the tight end position last year. And when you think about confidence in game one on the road, new quarterback Mitchell Trubisky, the confidence of throwing it underneath the Pat Frymuth and taking some of those easy first downs versus trying to threaten down the field against the Bengals with a, a rookie, George Pickens, whose numbers, you know, we just looked at the rookie numbers. Mm -hmm. I think Frymuth is the one of the best pivots for, for uh, George Kittle. 100%. Sure. Uh, the Muth is getting loose. Uh, this week, uh, Cincinnati allowed the fourth most Super tight end receptions last year. All right, uh, and then Najee Start doesn't him. come off the field. He's going to play. Yeah, yeah. Uh, good matchup, bad matchup doesn't matter. He's going to be the same every week. He's going to touch the ball a lot, be inefficient, be good for fantasy. We do not have Chase Claypool and George Pickens ranked in in positions where you would want to start them this week. Correct. All right, the Eagles traveling to Detroit. The DraftKings sportsbook line here: Philadelphia minus four. The over under forty nine points. I am so very tempted to hit the button, but I'm not going to. Oh, Good, man. He, 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 you and the Lions, not just you, but like the public. Well, I mean, the hard knocks. I I saw it. I, I would. It. I'll, I'll put it this way. I would bet the Lions th based on the line. Okay. Um, I think it's going to be a very very fun game. Right now, the over-under is 49. The Eagles are at 26.5 points, implied point total, and the Lions are at 22.5. Uh, this is going to be a lot of fun. I mean, we get to see Jalen Hurts and A.J. Brown, that combination for the very first time. Detroit allowed the third most expected points per attempt last year, and I do believe that Nick Sirianni will want to come out and show the way that he's balanced this offense or attempted to balance this offense. And so you're going to have some real shots at A.J. Brown and Devontae Smith and company. So, you know, the Lions were not a good defense last year. Correct. So the opportunity should be there. At the Looking at the running backs, though, for the Philadelphia Eagles, a little unfortunate we don't know because last year the Lions, 30th best against fantasy running backs, a.k.a. you wanted to you play stink. Against, you wanted to play against the Lions when you had a fantasy running back but with the the concoction of Miles Sanders, Kenneth Gainwell and Boston Scott do you have <laughs> I like that I like that language it's like a running back stew yeah like a do concoction. you have look someone I'm I someone from this squad We'll have a rushing touchdown. Yeah. Oh, Boston Scott. It will be Boston Scott. Okay, we're going with Boston. Yeah, yeah right. you want to gamble on a touchdown, go Boston Scott. <laughs> I, I agree, but I'm I it's so tough to look at a matchup where you are favored against a bad run D and say, I don't want to start any of the running yeah, backs. Sucks. But that is kind of how I feel. You know, the aforementioned Elijah Mitchell, David Montgomery, uh, I, those oh, guys ahead, are yeah. way ahead of Miles Sanders, Kenneth Gainwell, Boston Scott. Trey Sermon is well, exists there. Let's say you're in a deeper league and you had to decide between Devontae Smith in this matchup against the Detroit Lions or Brandon Ayuk in the previous matchup against the Bears. Where would you go? I would go with Devonta Smith. I think that he is uh, the more talented player. Uh, obviously, if, if George Kittle is out, I, I would swing that. Um, we have the you, you made the right call, Jason. Our consensus rankings have them three apart, but it's a it's a close one. It yeah, is. It, it is a close one. I'm excited for this is good vibes versus good vibes game. Like the off season for both these teams were so everything is great, uh, very positive, you know, yeah. very positive. And and the reality is, I I think that the Eagles' defense is significantly improved in ways that the good vibes from the Detroit Lions' offense, I think, could come crashing down so, quickly. That's also what's interesting here is the good vibes versus the good vibes. Like, they're those things are very fragile right now. Oh yeah, the Detroit the, vibes like, are very fragile. Like Detroit comes out here and they get smushed by ten points. <laughs> yeah, like yeah, it, everyone's whoop well, on to on to next year. Yeah. That's the way it's gonna feel. Yeah, and to to Jason's point, I mean the Eagles last year struggled against running backs. So DeAndre Swift, at least compared to last year's numbers of what they gave up. Seems like a very strong start at home. Um, and even TJ Hawkinson, you know, the, like yeah. you said, the Eagles, 
14.3 points given up to the tight end position. Amon Ross St. Brown, you drafted him to play him, so he's in your lineup. And then you're watching. You're watching to see what the involvement of DJ Chark is, Jamal Williams. Does he smile and steal touches away from DeAndre Swift? I oh, love Jamal. So we will find out. Dallas Goddard, are you comfortable st starting yes. Dallas Goddard in this game? Yes. All right, the New England Patriots on the road uh, taking on the Miami Dolphins. The DK Sportsbook line, Miami minus three and a half. The over-under is 46 points. What are your biggest storylines from this game? I was talking to the Borgogan this morning. Um, you know, the, the, the vibes from the Patriots offseason and preseason was as bad as it gets. Uh, throughout all of training camp, they were talking about how they can't run the ball. Um, there was like one day where Mac Jones looked great and then everything kind of came to a screeching halt. Their preseason looked terrible. They were putting their ones out against twos and couldn't move the ball. Um, so when I looked at this game early on, it was pretty much pro Dolphins. I think they w had an opportunity to come out here and in division really, you know, lay the groundwork that we are above you, Patriots. But I can't get over the fact that... <laughs> It's still Tua against Belichick. You know, it's still like, oh, can you, you've got all the weapons. You've got the new offensive coach. I think the system is going to be so much better. Your offensive line isn't great, but it is better than last year. But we've got, I mean, this the storyline of this game is, this is a perfect test for Tua. It's not the best defense in the world. They've, the Patriots lost quite a few pieces, but it's in division. It's against Bel Belichick. We're going to find out a lot about Tua in this game. And I genuinely don't like, I don't, I'm like 50 50. I don't know to just believe and say, I really think he's going to have a good game this week or he could collapse. It was 17 16 in New England, Miami won in week one last year. Uh, Mike, where are you with this matchup? And, and how confident are you in the Miami? options uh, I'm taking Miami to to win but the the biggest storyline of this game to me is not to it's Tyreek Hill Tyreek Hill versus Bill Belichick who like, we he the Patriots have been notorious of they take away your top option and the top option for this team is going to be Tyreek Hill you know we have uh, a regular season matchup from 2020 where in week four it was the Kansas City Chiefs versus the New England Patriots Four for 64. Now Tyreek scored, so he was fine for fantasy, but four for 64 is not what you're, what you're hoping for, for uh, from, your, from your wide receiver one in the second round. I do worry that you could end up deflated, even if Miami wins this game, with all of your fantasy options. I mean, we know the Patriots' defense has been stout. They gave up you know, 13 points to opposing fantasy quarterbacks. They were number one against tight ends. Uh, the wide receiver position, they're number three. So it's going to be a challenge. And it could be more of one of those slogs that you don't – you're kind of looking at the game and saying, well, I'm not really happy with much of what happened. Yeah, just try – be prepared to not overreact. Now, the wide receiver room, no one's starting a Patriot. Is that fair? That is fair and should be accurate. Damian Harris, Ramondre Stevenson. <sighs> Fascinating. That's going to be really intense to see. Does, if, does Ramondre Stevenson – move into the pass catching role now the kind of a, a hitch in that giddy up is uh, Ty Montgomery was practicing earlier this week and it looks like he may go and he was kind of moving in line to be the new James White for that team so if he is in or out I think that would sway how I play Stevenson this week so would you play Steve like let's say Ty Montgomery is not there because right now mm -hmm. I, I'm, not, I'm not sure he's going to be there would you play Ramondre Stevenson over Damian Harris yes because I think that the Patriots Pass are, catching. I think the Patriots are going to lose, yeah. or at least be down for. Who, where do you uh, land yeah, on that, Andy? I just feel nervous about Damian Harris in Week One. So yep, I I feel like maybe you were asking that question from a much deeper place. <laughs> I was. I was asking. Is that from a personal? Place, well, I was really. Yeah, I mean, I I've got <laughs> Damian Harris in the league of record, and I really want him to be the one now. Uh, so this is really that's my analysis oh. this is just desire. Well, then I really and hope that it's Ramondre <laughs> Stevenson. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, with the Chase Edmonds groin situation, you have a couple of questions that have been popular on the Start Sit tool on the website, which, by the way, anybody can go to the fantasyfootballers.com, plug in the names. You can get an answer on, on what our rankings say, and we will lay out some of the pros and cons for each player heading into the week. But Chase Edmonds is in 
the top three starts hit questions and two of them play tonight. So your decision <laughs> has to get made with ambiguity. Oh, I got through that word right there. Yeah, it's um, close enough. Uh, Chase Edmonds, Allen Robinson, Chase Edmonds, Gabe Davis. The wideouts. For both. Yes, I'll play the wideouts. Yeah. I, I would do it too. It's New England. It's a tough one. If if uh, if Chase is full participant, which I, I haven't seen a practice report yet, I I will play Chase. Otherwise, Over both? Over Gabe Davis? Um, I mean, it's kind of like uh, I think there were a bunch of questions Andy was asking or answering the other day of known points of the running back position versus uh, hopeful upside points from the wide receiver. I, I you know, I you guess Chase... in re in reality, we're not going to have enough information. By he's probably going to be a limited participant, and then you've got to start those wide receivers tonight. Are you confident that the carry counts for Chase Edmonds will be stable during the year when he's healthy? That's am, my biggest curiosity. I, I don't know if he's going to get seven or six and then just be involved in the passing game. Yeah, no, I'm I'm personally very confident that he'll be north of ten carries a game. The Baltimore Ravens taking on the New York Jets in New York. Baltimore seven point road favorites according to the DraftKings Sportsbook. The over under is forty four and a half. It puts the Jets under nineteen points in this game at home. Joe Flacco gets the start for the Jets, and uh, head coach Robert Sala saying it's unlikely that we see Zach Wilson before week four at Pittsburgh. Lamar Jackson on the other side. It's wheels up. He's in your lineup. Rashad Bateman, it's going to be a test. We're going to find out. Is he the alpha or just a guy that's contributing? Is it the Mark Andrews show and, you know, the rest of the gang. Sure. Bateman is one of those players where you're really hoping you see that target threshold that we talked about. And then we have Elijah Moore on the other side, along with Garrett Wilson making his debut, Corey Davis, uh, Brees Hall, Michael Carter in the backfield. And I. it's going to be very interesting to see what that workload looks like in week one. On the Over on the Jets side, I think it's it's a pretty easy decision here. Elijah Moore is, is in for me because I'm – I am confident in his role. I like Joe Flacco, real small sample size playing last year with Elijah Moore, but did heavily target him. Of course, some things have changed, but I, Elijah Moore's talent, I think, cannot be denied for this team. Garrett Wilson was their first round pick, but preseason, it at least the way they used him there, it didn't look like he was going to be completely ready to be like a, a full time guy in week one. So it's just it's Elijah Moore, and then at the running back position, that's where the decision is. Jason, you're 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 in uh, you're riding shotgun in Brace Lightning over yes. here. Are you starting him against the Baltimore Ravens with what what level of confidence For, between one to ten? What is your confidence at Brace Hall this week? I mean, it's a five. Like okay. if it was a good matchup, I might go to a seven, but. This isn't a great matchup, and week one is probably the least involved that I think you're going to see him through the course of the season. That being said, this is a player that I don't expect a huge amount of volume in, in this game, especially if the Ravens get out to a big lead. We're going to see two things. One, we're going to see how involved is he in the passing game, assuming that the Jets are down. That's going to be a huge telling point. And two, can he rip off an explosive play or two sure. that really makes up for it? You know, maybe he has... Uh, you know, 12 carries, but ends up with among those 12 carries has a 66 yard, you know, touchdown run. Uh, that's why I love Brees Hall is his athleticism and ability to have a game breaking play. And I think over the course of the season, there's going to be several of those. And it's going to be after those happen that they start saying, we've got to get this guy the ball more and more. So um, week one against the Ravens isn't my favorite situation. I have him on a ton of my teams and where I have him mo most, most often, that's a hard word. Most, <laughs> most often he's on my bench this week. Okay. Um, there are players that I am playing, uh, that, you know, you, you draft him and I'm, I'm putting those players ahead of him this week. I have Michael Carter, nine spots ahead of Brees Hall this week. They're massive underdogs. And I think he will be just throwing the ball a lot in the second half. Uh, you love Elijah Moore this week, Mike. We'll yes. talk more about that. And I agree completely with that. Uh, J.K. Dobbins? No. He's... Probably not going to be out there, although Harbaugh has been positive about his ascension. So I watched that uh, press conference where he said that. He's like, oh, you know, he's been ascending, but uh, 
we'll make a decision on running backs later in the week. And it didn't seem as positive as the kind of the quote that is being cir circulated around there. Lamar Jackson was talking about like, yeah. oh, I hope we have him in a couple of weeks. Yeah, it was like, you shouldn't have said that. I mean, that, that says to me, like, they're not expecting to have J.K. Dobbins there, and the head coach knows better than to say it. I think Mike Davis will be out there a ton. And the Jets were the worst team in football against the run. So you want a sneaky start. I, I do not care about Kenyon Drake as, as it pertains to whether I would throw Mike Davis out there. Uh, he, is the, he has shown himself to be good in the pass blocking situation and trustworthy, and this team is willing to just give the ball to somebody that's trustworthy even if they're not efficient. Jason, close, close your ears. Close your ears real quick. Andy. Yes, I would. Uh, Brees Hall or or Mike Davis. Yeah, I would. That's, I mean, look, I okay. I, I I told you to close your. No, ears. I knew what was coming, and I knew the answer from a mile away. Where are you at on that, Mike? I was the one asking the question. I mean, it's it, uh, it's a legitimate question because you've got a team that's going to be up and they're going to be running the ball, and it's but it's Mike Davis. It's the exact opposite situation of Brees Hall. You have old guy that can't move well and is going to be inefficient. Has much better probably odds of scoring a touchdown versus young guy behind touch the ball less but far more explosive yeah it's if I'm shooting for like if I if I just want a nice stable floor I'll go with Mike Davis but even though the opportunities and things will be there the, the ceiling yeah I don't I still don't think it's there for Mike Davis compared to Brees Hall I gotta I gotta have something riding on Brees Hall Andy <laughs> come come on <laughs> I know, I, like we we got it. We I have them forty three and forty four. Oh no! <laughs> well, I mean, bet on bet on number forty, whichever forty three. Yeah, I mean this is a this is bet like you have Brees Hall forty four this week. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Someone hates Brees Hall. No, I mean if he this had looked week. if he had looked better in the preseason than he did, if you know, there are a lot of really explosive players that have come out of college that haven't really given you the rookie year that you hope for. I mean, betting on long touchdown runs is not something I'm willing to do in week one against Baltimore. Brees might do it, but, you know, Mixon was pretty explosive coming out of college and DeAndre Swift. and. So you're saying you'll bet against it? No, I, I don't know if I want to make a bet that gets lost by one carry. Okay. Um, <laughs> I mean, do you want to bet total work? Probably not, right? No. No, because that's Mike Davis. irrelevant. Uh it might become very relevant soon. Jacksonville. Another player that we're going to disagree on, Jason. Jacksonville taking on the Washington Commanders in Washington. Washington is two and a half point home favorites. The over-under is 44. Trevor Lawrence, the good vibes on the Jacksonville side. I don't know if it's just neutral vibes, but that seems so much better than what it was last year. What, what would you describe the vibes in Jacksonville last year as? Toxic? Noxious? Oh, yeah. Dark? Yeah, smelly po poisonous so we're in a much better uh, we're in a place of hope right travis Etienne yeah. back out on the field gets to make his this is his debut as an nfl running back and then uh you have christian kirk the new wide receiver reliable target for trevor lawrence uh led all starters and targets in the preseason that's what you wanted to see uh, you get to see evan ingram mike your your favorite player in the national football league Second favorite. And uh, who's the first? Probably Trey Lance. So. Yeah. yeah. Trey Lance, okay. Yeah. Trey Lance, oh, Evan Ingram. No, it's, it's the running back on the other side of the uh, the matchup here. So, uh, Antonio Gibson. <laughs> yeah, baby! <laughs> who will be the starter in this game. J.D. McKissick, who we didn't really get to see in the preseason, also going to be involved. And the game, it's a pretty close matchup right here. <laughs> yeah. 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 Can't catch you know, me out. Yesterday, guard. we mentioned McKissick on the Spotify Live, and I kept watching for it. Oh, did he? That'll, that'll be the new thing. No, and it never, it never happened. That's the, the new thing. Is we just we sit, got to keep you on your toes, fully tensed up, waiting for it. And it's it never, way it worse than even the old uh, the old hype train. <laughs> for us, for us, it's far yeah. more scary. But uh, you know, you look at this game in decision making wise for fantasy. Look, week one, if you drafted a player at a high position, then you're confident putting him in your lineup most often. In this game, there are some kind of lower drafted players. Christian Kirk went later. Jahan Dotson went later. Um, Antonio Gibson went later. McKissick. Trevor Lawrence. Trevor Lawrence. So where are you? Are you looking to get any of these guys to force them, to jackknife them into your lineup this week? Um, 
I think that this game is chock full of wonderful pivot options, not guys that you're trying to force into your lineup. But w when you look at some of the injuries to other wide receivers that are cropping up and you're saying, you know, well, what is what are my other options behind him? A Christian Kirk uh, is a great option. Kirk I or Deontay Johnson? A perfect example. I think Christian Kirk is a good enough player, assured of enough targets with a good enough matchup where I would take that. I would take Christian Kirk over Deontay Johnson, not knowing if he uh, plays a few snaps and re-aggravates the shoulder. Last year, Washington was horrific against opposing fantasy quarterbacks and wide receivers. So you talk about Kirk. You know, nobody's starting Lawrence this week, but you got your eye on him to say, maybe we get something out of Trevor Lawrence this year, or is it more of the same in Jacksonville? I do think Trevor Lawrence is a, a fun start in two quarterback leagues where he might be sitting there with other options. You know, obviously in this game, I, I would start him over Carson Wentz on the other side of the ball if you're in a two QB league and hope you get what you drafted last year. Where are you, Andy, with the Jacksonville running backs? James Robinson sounds like he's going to go. I would expect Travis Etienne to receive three times the snaps of James Robinson okay. in this game. So then you you wouldn't be scared off of starting Etienne? I think he's a good flex play okay. this week. Yeah, I think James Robinson will be watching just to see what the, you know, if you if he's taking Travis Etienne off the field, if he's getting some first and second down work. Um, you know, he is not a player that has depended on getting to the outside edge and putting a foot into the ground and cutting up field. He is a between the tackles, take what the defense gives you grinder. So um, I would not expect him to get very many snaps in this first week. And the matchup's not bad for ETN. So that's kind of where I'm at. All right. Terry McLaurin. Uh, I mean, yeah, I guess. Yeah, I mean, you, you've got to start Terry McLaurin. You drafted him to be a starter. Uh, this isn't Terry a, McLaurin. This isn't a scary yeah, matchup. Yeah, I guess. <laughs> yeah. Is that the, the I, song? It it is the song, and I hate that. That is the song. I hate it so so much. The wind stench. I mean, I, uh, I don't think he's like a good, that guy. I think McLaurin is a good start this week. I'm not. I'm not. He should be good. I don't even think he's neutral. I think this is a really good matchup for him. He's going to come out. This is their yeah, debut. Yeah, Mike. Come with, on, Mike. This is their debut with Carson Wentz. I I would be happy to start Terry McLaurin. He'll probably be either the 57th best receiver on the week or the third best. Yeah. It's those, that's one of prob those. He'll probably be the 45th best or the fourth best, Mike. Yeah. That, that That's quite a coin flip that you're going with. L let's put at least when he blew up last year, the first two games that he blew up, the Giants, the Falcons. Mm -hmm. Okay. So you're looking at when the matchup said maybe he'll do something, maybe he does. Okay. All can right. we go with that? Yeah, I can take the match up there. And all then right. just wait and see on Jahan Dotson. We just talked about it. Uh, rookie wide receiver. See how established he'll be, but he should be starting. He's yeah. A, he's a great bench stash. And and keep an eye on Curtis Samuel. Not for Curtis sure. Samuel, yeah, yeah, but yeah, I yeah. am very curious kind of how, how this offense plays out with those three wide receivers and – you know, look at the things behind the scenes, and we'll bring these up next week, but the the routes run and targets per routes run, those type of things. Well, let's look. Let's go ahead and start at the running back position as we give you our starts of the week. Starts of the week. Well, that makes sense because my running back start of the week is Travis Etienne. Um, someone that I'm, I'm trying to pick someone that you might be nervous of, might be a little bit worried about. You drafted him, maybe where you have other running backs that you could start. Um, and you know, James Robinson, the news has been, look, he's ready to go. The, he, he, they say that no limitations. They say, um, you know, he's going to be ready to go. But the, the reality, the reality <laughs> is what is it? He hasn't practiced with full contact yet this entire offseason he's been practicing in full I, that we talked about how weird this is to be like I'm a full participant in practice yeah. but also I, I can't don't have, hit me don't hit me I can't, I can't have full contact um but that's where he's at, he's at right now now James Robinson comes back this year let's say he gets to complete 100 percent recovery and he is the James Robinson as far as talent on the field that he was last year it's not going to be week one it's not going to be right now. They're going to ease him back in. They've eased him along through training camp. He didn't play in the preseason. And so this week against this Manders team, the defense does not look scary to me. You, you are without Chase Young to start the year. And ETN 
is going to have a lot of opportunities to catch the ball. I think he's a solid running back too this week. He's not someone I'm uh, forcing in my lineups, but I'm I'm trying to give you confidence that he he's going to touch the ball enough to show his explosiveness. I think this offense is good. I think the matchup is good. I'm not afraid of starting uh, Travis Etienne uh, this season or this week. And I'm my start of the week is the running back. On the other side, it's at least for the next month, it should continue to be Antonio Gibbs season. Washington, they are a two-and-a-half-point home favorite. Opposing running backs average the fifth most rushing attempts per game against Jacksonville last year. And in his career when Gibson sees 15 or more carries, he averages 17 half PPR points per game. All right, I'm going to go with uh, the unfortunate reality. We call it Melvante. Oh! Mm -hmm. I think both Denver running backs, uh, you know, you talk about a player you'd be nervous to start. Melvin Gordon is one you are probably nervous to start. I think this is a week that you can do it against Seattle. Uh, we didn't want the sequel to Melvante. We got it anyways, and they can both eat on the road. I'm, I, all the reports out of Denver, you know, Benjamin Albright coming out, who's, mm -hmm. who's, who's locked in there, talking about fancy players being bummed because Melvin Gordon's going to get a ton of work and, more importantly, situational work. Two-minute drills, pass catching, goal line, you know, if there's a time for a veteran running back to have all the juice, it's week one. And so I think you've got flex start potential for Melvin Gordon with touchdown upside. I came into the dock to put Melvin Gordon as my running back. Did you really? Uh, I did. I think he is a great play this week, and he was already taken by Javante Williams and Melvin Gordon combination. Yes. All right, Jason, let's hear your quarterback because uh, they – he plays for the same team. Okay, let's go with Russell Wilson. Russell. Russell. Revenge game, Monday night Russell. football. He's going to be unlimited. Mm. That's right. Um, if there's one person amped for this game, it's Russell Wilson. Uh, I think he's going to destroy. Seattle secondary allowed the second most passing yards, the second highest pass success rate in the NFL last year. He knows this defense pretty well. And Nathaniel Hackett's going to let Russ do his thing. As a Packers OC, his team's averaged 35 pass attempts per game. Pete Carroll only allowed Russ to hit that in 25% of his career games. And in those games where Russ had 35-plus passing attempts, he averaged 280 and 2. So I think that Russell Wilson going to Seattle is going to be north of two passing touchdowns, and he's going to want to want to show them what they're missing. Yeah, they're going to miss it. Uh, Mike? My quarterback start of the week, Lamar Jackson, is my number one guy of the week versus the Jets. He is a week one dominant player, averages in those three career week one games, 74% completion, nearly 300 passing yards and three touchdowns, plus 46 rushing touchdowns. Meanwhile, the Jets allowed the second most 20-plus yard pass plays last season that is a deadly combination here for Lamar Jackson and then I just wanted to feature a quote Warren Sharp uh he tweeted out saying like I don't think people are prepared for what the Ravens are going to do this year and he he highlighted Isaiah Likely and Warren Sharp's like I'm having 2019 flashbacks which if you go back to 2019 the person loudest leading the Lamar Jackson charge that year was Warren Sharp and not necessarily saying Likely is a huge fantasy option but when Lamar was truly dominating, it was in two tight end sets, and they had cut those back, and they were they were inefficient when they were out of that formation, and now they can do it yet again. Uh, I am all in on Lamar this entire season. I think he's going to be an absolute force. Um, and he's playing for that bag. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he is, and, and Isaiah likely will be involved. Sure. He really will. Uh, the closest thing they have to the third target. Uh, I'm going with Joe Burrow. All so right. against Pittsburgh, uh, I want to highlight a couple of things about Joe Burrow. First of all, 78%, 83%. That was his completion percentage in the two games against Pittsburgh last Very year. Very accurate. Um, also, the kind of narrative about it's just the end of the season for Joe Burrow, mm -hmm. 5,100 yard pace. That was the last 11 games of the year. Uh, that's from week six on. And I think he has a chip on his shoulder heading into the year, and he's got weapons that you can't stop. You can say that you want to stop them. You can't stop them. Jamar Chase is a mismatch for uh, every single team in the league, and he does the Tyreek Hill thing. He disables the defense and, and enables T. Higgins and other players to get open. 
because you have to devote so much attention to him. This is a week one confidence start. Joe Burrow at home. Uh, I think it's going to be delicious. Yeah, at wide receiver, I've got Marquise Hollywood Brown. <laughs> There's no DeAndre Hopkins. Uh, they are going to be down big to the Kansas City Chiefs. Uh, there's a banged up Rondell Moore and Zach Ertz that I think it seems like might be in the game, but they have uh, been missing time. And old man AJ Green, I think it's easy to say this he, that Hollywood gets over seven targets this game, and Kansas City gets beat deep, and that is Hollywood's specialty. Opposing wide receivers average nearly 13 yards per reception against them, and they are bottom 10 in 20 plus pass yard attempts. They lose the Honey Badger, so I think the necessity of having to throw the ball to Hollywood combined with the game script combined with the defense this all sets up for Hollywood to have an awesome week one I think he's going to be in that category of players that coaches want to try out the new toy yeah so I think Hollywood you know the my start of the week is one of those guys but like even Tyreek in Miami Devontae Adams they're going to be given some shots yeah. Mike, who's your start of the week at wide receiver? It's Elijah Moore against the Baltimore Ravens. The last time we saw Flacco and Elijah playing together was week 11 last year, 8 for 141 and 1 on 11 targets. The Baltimore Ravens should be up big, meaning the Jets have to pass to catch up, and Baltimore allowed the most 20-plus yard passing plays. Well, the Jets were second. It was tough for the Baltimore Ravens. Maybe they have that fixed uh, going into this season, but this is the data we have to go on, and I expect a very negative game script for the Jets. A.J. Brown, that's my start of the week at the wide receiver position against Detroit. You drafted him. Now it's time for liftoff, and uh, he has played eight games in his career indoors. He's averaged seven and a half targets, 97 receiving yards, and almost a touchdown, over 18 yards of uh, a reception. Not a perception. That's a different thing. Right. Uh, but I think, again, it's going to be showing off the new toy, taking some shots to him, and he's too physically gifted to be stopped. At tight end, I've got Gerald Mount Everett. Really? Right. I do. Interesting. He's one of, he was one of my favorite uh, late-round tight ends this uh, draft season. I took him last night in the Megla Bowl because of this week one matchup. The Raiders, they allowed the fifth most fantasy points to the tight end position last year. Everett is going to be a full-time player in a game with the second highest over-under of the week. If you want to try to target a tight end touchdown. Wow. Yeah. That's Gerald, a lot of tees. Gerald Everett is your High man. Tea. High yeah. tee. Uh, by the way, Don Parham didn't practice on Wednesday, so you have Gerald Everett really locked in to start the year. Yeah, I love the Gerald Everett call. I'm going with it's another pivot option. Big Irv of the Minnesota Vikings. He's taking on the Green Bay Packers. He is back. He is healthy. He will be playing. Uh, last year, the Packers allowed the fifth highest tight end target success rate so you have what you got uh mount everett and then you've got big irv that's right you guys gonna need to help me out because i have cole Komet. kokomo no that doesn't work well for size but it's a place that you want to go okay <laughs> i was I looking like it. i was looking for the kokomo kokomo uh cole Komet Get against san francisco and you take it slow baby <laughs> yeah i like it a lot i mean of all the options i <laughs> really didn't Mo. didn't expect that one to come out um Komet was our favorite late round pickup yep uh, he projects to be second on the team in targets behind darnell mooney necessary to the offense and san francisco allowed the fifth highest pass rate inside the 10 Komet has a a real shot at getting a touchdown maybe even two in week one for the chicago bears and i hope we see some some signs uh, or, or something resembling what we saw from Justin Fields and company yes. at the very end Please. of the year or of the preseason. Jason Moore's ironclad, locked and loaded, 100% guaranteed boom, boom kicker of the week. I'm breaking off something fresh. Seeing who can mesh, looking for a new boom, boom, Brosif. But to be in my crew, I need something from you to start the Vikings, Greg Joseph. Got the lights and everything. Mm. I mean, sensational. Excellent. Oh, yeah. Are we snapping it? We snap for boom, boom, Brosif. Cool cat, man. Yeah. Cool cat. Good, good, good. Yeah. All right. Tomorrow. The rest of the week one matchups. Enjoy the football tonight. It is football time. <laughs> and if you want to hang out with us, head to jointhefoot.com. Join our Discord channel. And uh, it's going to be a fun year. So thanks for hanging out. 
Enjoy the football, everybody. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FF Ballers.